Hey, what's up guys? My name is Jenna. Welcome back to my C++ series. So today we're going to be talking all about virtual destructors in C++. If you're not sure what a destructor is, then definitely check out that video first. And also, if you don't know what a virtual function is, then there's also that video that you should probably check out because a virtual destructor, as you can imagine, is kind of the combination of both of those things. Now this is kind of simple, this video probably shouldn't take too long and we're just going to dive into an example and take a look immediately, but essentially virtual destructors are very very important for when you're dealing with polymorphism. So in other words, if I have a series of subclasses and all that inheritance, if you guys haven't, if you guys don't know what inheritance is in C++, definitely check out that video as well. Um, but if you have a class like A and then a class B, B is derived from A, and you want to actually reference class B as class A, but it's actually class B, and then you decide to delete A, or it gets deleted by some kind of way, then you also want the destructor of B to run, not just A. And that is essentially what virtual destructors are, and that's what that's what they facilitate. So that probably made no sense to you in your head because it's kind of hard to visualize, so we're just gonna jump into some code straight away and, and just see this in action. Okay, so all I'm gonna do here is make two classes. One's going to be called base, because this is going to be our base class. I'm just gonna make a public constructor, and I'll just print out uh, constructed, just so that we know um, that the class gets constructed and, and, the, and that the constructor gets called. Then I'll also write a destructor, um, and I'll say destructed, okay? Or actually, I'll just call this constructor and destructor. Okay, cool. I wanna do the exact same thing for another class. I'll just copy and paste it but I'll call this derived and it's actually going to be derived from base. So we have derived as a subclass of the base class. And then over here, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. And in fact, I'm just going to write which one was constructed. So base constructor, base destructor, and then also derived constructor and derived destructor. Okay, so let's consider two scenarios here. The first thing I wanna do is create an instance of the base class. I'm just gonna allocate this on the heap so that we can be explicit with our uh, creation and deletion here. So base base equals new base. Then I'll write delete base. And then I'll just print like a little divider between the two, like that. And I'll also do derived derived equals new derived. Just like that, oops, derived I'll call it. And we'll delete derived as well. Let's hit F5 and see what happens with this current setup here. So you can see that nothing really is different. I mean, I haven't marked anything, anything as virtual at all, but I have a base and derived where derived is also of the type base because it's a subclass of the base class. So let's hit F5. Okay, so as you can see here, I guess what you probably would expect would happen happened here. When we created the base class, it only called the base constructor and destructor after we deleted it, which is exactly what you would expect. And for derived as well, what it seemed to have done was uh, it first called the base constructor, then the derived constructor, and then after we deleted it, it called the derived destructor first, and then the base destructor. So everything is working correctly here as we would expect. Now the problem of needing a virtual destructor arises when we have this scenario. So let's just copy this one more time. But this time what I'll do, um, is I'll actually have like a polymorphic kind of type here. So I'll just call it poly. Basically what we're doing here is we're creating a derived instance. However, we're assigning it to a base type like this. So we are treating this kind of poly object as if it was a base pointer here, but it's actually a pointer to a derived, our derived type. So in this case, if we run this code and see what happens, you can see that we have this third scenario here where the base constructor and derived constructor gets called correctly just as we just as we would expect from that second example. However, when it comes time to delete it, just the base destructor is called, not the derived destructor. We're missing this here. And that's very important because that could cause a memory leak and I'll show you how in a minute. But you can see that what's specifically happening here is when we go to, de to delete poly, it doesn't know that actually this destructor that I'm calling might potentially have another destructor because it's not marked as virtual, which means that C++ doesn't actually know that, oh, okay, this, there might be like a method, an, an override, some kind of overridden method in another kind of class that's further down the hierarchy. Because with methods, of course, just with a normal method, if we mark it as virtual, then it has the ability to be overridden, which means it has to fit into the V table and all that has to work and be set up. With destructors, it's a bit different because a virtual destructor, you're not overriding the destructor, you're just adding a destructor kind of. So in other words, if I change the base, this base destructor to be virtual, 
it's actually going to call both. It's going to end up calling that derived destructor first and then go up the hierarchy and also call the base one. We'll see that in a minute. So to do this, what we need to do is simply just mark this, uh, or actually, first of all, let's talk about the problem. Why do we even need to call the derived destructor? Well, consider this, this example. Maybe we had a member here, like an int array or something that was allocated on the heap here. In the constructor, we actually allocate it like this, maybe. And then in the destructor, we decide that we need to delete that array. Now, in this scenario, if we just hit F5 with this current code, what's actually happening over here, because you can see it's not calling that derived destructor, um, but it is, of course, calling the derived constructor. What's obviously happening is that we're allocating all of this memory, 20 bytes here, and then we're never actually calling this line of code because the destructor is not called. So we're never deleting that heap allocated array, which means that we have a memory leak. So how do we go about solving this? Well, all we really need to do here is just mark this base destructor as virtual, which means that there is basically the possibility for this class to be extended, to be subclassed, and we might be including a destructor that also needs to get called. This basically tells C++, hey, you need to call the derived destructors if they're present. So now let's hit F5 and see what we get. Okay, cool, check this out. So we have the exact same behavior now as we did in the second example. That derived destructor is called first, and then the base destructor is called like this, which means that this array does indeed get cleaned up and everyone's happy, even if we do treat it kind of as the polymorphic type in the sense that we address it or we treat it like that base class type. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Very, very simple, bit of a quick tip. Um, really important whenever you're writing, whenever you're writing a class that you will be extending or that might be subclassed, whenever you're basically permitting a class to be subclassed, you need to 100% declare your destructor as virtual. Otherwise, no one's going to be able to safely extend that class, including yourself, because if you do that, you can't use a destructor because it will never get called if you're treating that class by its base type, which might be the case if you're passing it into a function as well. And maybe that function only takes it as like a base pointer and then deletes it or does whatever it does. This is a perfect example anyway. So definitely make sure that you are declaring your destructors as virtual if you're allowing that subclassing to actually happen. If you like this video, please hit the like button. You can also help support the series by going to patreon.com forward slash the channel. Huge thank you as always to all my lovely supporters. This series wouldn't be here without you guys. I will see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you.